It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. I bet you didn't know that inventing activity by black inventors peaked in 1899, and it has never recovered. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of white college graduates. That's just one of the reasons why you need to know about Invent Together. When our patent system gets more diverse, our nation will get stronger and more successful. Find out how you can help diverse inventors and unleash economic opportunity at inventtogether.org. Touchdown, Los Angeles! Rams Nation, welcome back. It's your boy Bear Motter from Rams Podcast, but this is Locked On Rams. This is the Tuesday edition of Locked On Rams, and it is game week. We are getting closer and closer to that Monday night game. I'm super excited about it, and I'm super excited about our guest today. Not so much a guest, more of a staple on this show. We've got James, <laughs> the man, the myth, the Kroger. Mr. James Kroger's on the show. James, how you doing, bud? Rams Nation, I'm doing well, and hey, I like uh, J- the man, the myth, the Kroger. I think I like that a little better because uh, while I am a regular on this show now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm quite a legendary status yet. Well, you're a legend in our book, and we appreciate you joining us. Again, still out in Chicago. I get back to L.A. later in the week, but we're doing this via Skype, so I appreciate you joining us. A uh, lot to get to today. You took the weekend and kind of went out in the mountains and came back to a whole different world after Aaron Donald was signed last week. So I want to get your reaction on a couple things. I want to talk roster moves with you. I want to talk practice squad. Just want to talk overall getting ready for the Oakland game. Uh, before we do that, guys, make sure to go check us out. You know where we can find us, at Lockdown Rams on Instagram and Twitter. LA underscore Rambling Bear on Twitter and J Kroger 3. And then don't forget Rams Podcast. We're recording another one later in the week, getting hyped and ready for the Oakland game. So make sure to check that out at the tail end of the week. Also, I know I've kind of missed this market, but we're jumping in. The whole Lockdown Network is joining Facebook. We've got Facebook pages up, we've got groups going on. So if you're on Facebook and you've been feeling left out of the Twitter and Instagram world, guess what? I got you covered. Go check it out. We've got a Locked On Rams Facebook page now. Share your content. I'll be putting the episodes up there so you can download from there. We're going to start doing weekly poll questions. Get your take on some of the things that are happening, uh, not only with the Rams, but all around the NFL. So come join us. Follow the content there as well. Feel free to inbox me. Shoot some messages there. Uh, Excited to get that going. And don't forget, the college Locked On is out and going. First week of college football cracked off with some great games. We've got about 10 college podcasts already out. Oklahoma, Kentucky, Baylor, Penn State, Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, BYU. They're all up and going. We've got a handful coming more. We got a handful coming after that. So make sure to go give those a follow. And then our locked on NFL. He's got a great lineup all week. So if you hadn't had a chance to go check that out, he's bringing on some great guests and covering NFL topics from A to Z, so make sure to check that out as well. Well, whoo, James, that is out of the way. It's me and you now, bud. Let's talk about, right out the gate, because I kind of want to hear your story of the weekend, because I got a text a few days later, and you were like, holy crap, Khalil Mack got traded? (laughs) And, uh, you know, so you were up in the mountains, no service, you didn't see the cuts, you didn't see anything. Talk to me about coming back into service and back into the football world and just finding out that Aaron Donald really was no longer the highest paid defensive player in the league and and then finding out some of the cuts what was some of your instant reaction to all that oh dude well first of all first of all to paint the picture for everybody i just decided last minute to take a risk in southern california if any of you out there are campers or uh, try to get up to the mountains you know that you know it's it's just crazy packed and it, it could be very well impossible to find yourself a camping spot but we decided i was feeling lucky and good after the aaron donald news last weekend for those of you that listened to the Locked On episode, I did join via over the phone and had a chat with Barry because we were all so jacked about the the news coming out. So, dude, I, I kind of thought I was going to be cool over the weekend, you know, leaving on a, a positive note. I did end up getting a pretty sweet spot up there. So we looked out there and I was just every, thinking everything's vibing, everything's looking good. I didn't think there would be such huge news when I got back to uh, Southern California to the house that uh, something like this would happen. So, you know, it was completely unexpected. 
Um, I, I obviously didn't have service up there and I wasn't paying attention. I just didn't think something huge like this would go down. I thought I could sneak away and be away from the NFL, come back to my draft coming up uh, tomorrow on Wednesday and uh, everything else going smooth for the Rams. But that's amazing news, not only because it was huge news in the NFL, they won up to Aaron Donald's number. I think you, correct me if I'm wrong, got $90 million guaranteed. But it's also amazing the fact that we don't even have to worry about that guy on the game that you right. know we had right. chatted about previously. That you know we're not worried because it's we're facing the Raiders or anything like that. But there's other factors. It's the first game back. It's Monday Night Football. Uh, the later game, the whole country's watching. We're kind of put on this platform. There's a lot of expectations coming out of Rams camp going into this year. And John Gruden is kind of a, he's a he's a genius, people would say. And and we know that Sean McVay has looked up to him his whole life. So it, just that factor always kind of made me a little tense about this game. But the fact that they're not even going to have Mac out there makes me feel so relieved and so good about it. And it's just crazy huge news around the NFL. I mean, talk about some of the expectations that were set with these contract negotiations between Aaron Donald, Beckham, and then Aaron Rodgers. We had this Mac thing happen. But, dude, you're out in Chicago. I'm sure it was big news out there. Everybody's probably super jacked to have him on the squad. But it's it was, a, it was surprising news. And then also followed by that was a huge relief uh, off my shoulders knowing we'll have to face him. Yeah, it was crazy out here. I actually woke up surprisingly early on Saturday morning and checked my phone, and I was like, I kind of had to rub my eyes a couple times, like, wait, <laughs> and the like Bears the got him? Like, yeah, yeah, er, 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 what's going on? <laughs> so it was uh, it was pretty impressive. I actually had Lauren Cox on the show yesterday from Locked On Bears, so guys, if you didn't hear it, we got to kind of pick his brain, so feel free to go back and check that out, kind of get his instant reaction, how excited he is, how that really affects the Bears, and you know a little bit how it affects the Rams, and you mentioned it, James. We no longer have to see Khalil Mack week one. And the crazy thing is, I watched the press conference the other day from John Gruden where he reacted to it. And obviously, they asked him a thousand questions about it because people in the media and us included and everybody else kind of has been saying, well, John Gruden didn't want him and he's not willing to pay. Uh, he doesn't write the checks, people. And he kind of said that a couple times, you know, when they asked him about giving up another second round pick involved in that. And he was like, again, didn't have much to do with that. So I couldn't really comment on that. and But he looked sad, James. I mean, he was hurting. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. I was looking at them, and in my head, kind of slowly, I was like, man, whoever gets to play them week one is getting a, an easy matchup. Wait a minute, that's us. <laughs> uh, so excited. I, I just entered a, a confidence pool where you got to pick every game and then rank it 1 to 16, your confidence level. Rams, Raiders, Monday night, 16 point confidence uh with that win just after that press conference mm -hmm. alone gruden kept talking about building for the future and needing to fill a lot of holes and people have to step up that you know really they didn't expect at this point to make the team and they also cut a couple other people uh on the d line that he said weren't underperforming and things like that so it looks it almost looked like a post-game press conference at week 17 and they went you know only had four or five wins. He looked gutted. He looked defeated already. It's game week. I'm sure that's not the message to his team. But, man, he looked like a beaten up puppy. And I was like, man, I can't wait to come in and, and steal their dog food on Monday night. That's that's hilarious. And, God, yeah, I, I would feel the same way, dude. Imagine if we you come into a brand-new coach to that team, then you lose uh, the best defensive player in 2016, and uh, he just slips underneath your fingers. But I saw an interesting tweet regarding the situation. I, I don't think the fans are taking this very well, to be honest with you. The Raiders Nation is pretty pissed off, and a lot of fingers pointing at John Gruden. You mentioned that it, you know he's not the one writing the checks, but I saw this tweet. I thought it was interesting. It says, John Gruden's first offense, hashtag Raiders, one, build the NFL's oldest roster, average age 27.4. Two, trade Khalil Mack, who leads all edge rushers and pressures since 2014. Three, trade 79 overall for Martavius Bryant and cut him before week one. Yep. And then four, select uh, Colton Miller over Derwin James. So a lot of people in Raiders Nation are pretty pissed off right now with their brand new coach who hasn't even got the chance to play one game. Yeah, and kind of adding to that, he, in that press conference, said, you know, 90 million people is a lot of money. You have to understand that. And people's reaction were, well, so is 100 million. And that's what they're paying you, dude. So we understand money <laughs> is money, but you know, you're making a pretty penny over a long period of time. But to come in and you said it, you know, they got an old roster, 
They've missed on a lot of things so far as far as uh, the Bryant who they released and, you know, traded a third round pick. You know, he was talking about one of the reasons he came here was for Mac and tried to get the deal done, just couldn't do it. And I understand that there's an economic reason and they didn't want to bankrupt themselves. But man, and then he said the Bears just gave him an offer that they could not refuse. And but hey, that all works out in our favor. We talked about it. We facing them Monday night, which now is only you know, as this will release only six days away. It's the last game of the week. It's super exciting for us. We got to wait till the very end. We're going to take a quick break, James. On the other side, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, pick your brain on, you know, some of the roster stuff that's happened as far as the cuts, the final 53, our practice squad, and we'll go from there. So we'll catch you on the other side right after this quick commercial break from some of our sponsors. All right, Rams Nation, we are back, and we are joined by the man, the myth, the Kroger, James Kroger from Rams Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us, bud. So as we talked about, you know, we talked about the Cleo Mack deal, and it really is almost like a win for us, even though we do have to see Cleo Mack week 14. But at that point, hopefully we stacked up a bunch of wins. We'll be very confident playing on the road again, and that can be a big win before the playoffs. But our 53-man roster has been completed I want to pick your brain on it, ask if you think there's you know big surprises there or anything that jumps off the table for you, or if it's kind of what we expected. Watching some of these other teams as they picked up tons of players on the waiver wire and had lots of last-minute decisions, sounded like, you know, was, I don't want to say an easy 53 for the Rams, but not as stressful as some other teams. And you got to say that's a good problem to have because we knew who we had coming in and they felt really comfortable with the guys that they said welcome to the team to. James, your thoughts on the roster? Honestly, dude, I kind of feel the same way. It's There's nothing really shocking here. Uh, you had let me know when I was up in the boonies that Hemingway had received a cut, somebody that we've been paying attention to for a while. And, you know, my initial response was, dang, that sucks, but I'm not surprised by it at all. And being not surprised, I'm not really shocked about anything with the, the cuts. I'm looking at the 53-man roster here, and I'm, uh, I'm nodding, doing a lot of head nodding. And it, we all kind of know following the offseason moves and everything going on during training camp and who was doing well and who we were paying attention to during the preseason games and what we were expecting. The only real aspect of this that makes my eyes a little sore is kind of looking at this quarterback situation, dude, because right. I still see Sean Mannion, and I still see that we have three – and I'm not comfortable with that, but uh, you know, kind of like McVay said, it, everything else wasn't was really not no surprise at all. Yeah, and you know, talking about that quarterback slot, I kind of mentioned it yesterday, and you know, there's a few guys out there. Paxton Lynch was cut from the Broncos, former first round pick. Uh, Going to be interesting to see where he goes. And then the Giants ended up cutting back up Davis Webb. Uh, he was actually a Texas Tech former Cal Berkeley as well, so maybe some. Uh, Jared Goff ties can bring him in and and uh, have a backup there but I don't know if they're really interested in this as much as we are we'll have to find out and see the next few days are going to be interesting obviously we're going to have a, a, a close eye on this as it develops but I'm with you not too comfortable about number two and three quarterbacks we kept Luis Perez on the practice squad I don't imagine or really see a scenario where I'm going to feel comfortable that we have to bring him up onto the roster because that probably means some bad news uh, is going on but I really sometimes we're, we make a big deal about this because we don't feel comfortable about that backup slot but we just got to hope that Jared Goff stays healthy and we, this is never an issue throughout the season but if it does happen it's one position that it has a kind of a glaring negativity on it and maybe it's something that the Rams go look at and RG3 made the cut he's on the team but obviously we can still go trade for him uh, there's not a lot of amazing guys out there. The Raiders actually made a trade and went and got a quarterback. They're actually the other one I was thinking of was down in San Diego, Cardell Jones, uh, big arm, former Ohio State guy. Never really has seen much action, but he did pretty well in the preseason. Few names out there. We'll see if anything shakes out. Anyone jump off the page for you, James? Honestly, no. That's that's the side piece. There's not anybody out there around thinking like we got to get that guy. Uh, you know, one thing I, I saw on on social media that we have to keep in mind if 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 worse comes to worse and we're stuck with these two quarterbacks, basically Mannion. We got to also remember that Mannion standing behind Whitworth and Sullivan and right. some of those guys on the offensive line 
is a lot different than him in the preseason with behind our number twos or threes. So, you know, he will have more time back there and, you know, he probably won't be as bad as we're all fearing, but at the same time, I feel a lot more comfortable with somebody else in this, in this position. And, you know, you talked about Paxton Lynch just being cut and Thursday night against the Cardinals in preseason. He looked okay. 14 for 15 for 128 yards and two touchdowns facing somebody who's in our division. So I, I don't know the Denver, you know, all their number one picks, they, They've had four quarterbacks drafted in the first round, and none have lasted more than three seasons. So I think they they have an ongoing quarterback issue. Um, but yeah, you mentioned RG three. There's nobody really. I'm just kind of like hoping that we we land. So that's a whole other side of this. Is I don't really know what could what could come out of this 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 QB spot. Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned that about Denver and their quarterback drafting and really a non-success there since they really had Peyton Manning. And it's crazy to think that happens with. John Elway as your GM, like, like <laughs> one of the best quarterbacks ever, cannot judge talent in quarterbacks, and shocking to me. And I'm gonna, I'm curious to see how our old friend Case Keenum does out there, and in that system, he's got a pretty good defense. But um, we saw him here in LA. We always loved him, but he just never did enough. He found a role in Minnesota with another great defense. So maybe he's he's really developed over the last couple of years. But I don't really see it. They faced the Seahawks week one, and. As I mentioned in my confidence pool earlier, I definitely picked the Browns in that. I think the Seahawks are going to struggle. They're on the road. And one thing I did see is Denver has won five consecutive opening games to kick off the season. So maybe this is year six. It would be nice to see the Seahawks go down early and us go up. Before we get out of this segment, I want to kind of then pick your brain. You mentioned Hemingway got cut. He was invited to the practice squad along with Kaderil Hodge, Stephen Mitchell Jr., who I'm kind of excited about to see if you know he ever gets a chance to come up. Luis Perez, who was mentioned earlier. We added Jeremiah Cologne, guard, and then two cornerbacks, Dominique Hatfield and Ramon Richards, and then safety, Stephen Parker. That's 10 players. Right now, Aaron Donald doesn't count against the roster, so we're actually currently carrying 54 players. Most likely, one player will come down from the roster to the practice roster, or, like we mentioned earlier, we add someone else that's a free agent right now or that got cut from another team, and one of these guys on the practice squad is going to get booted to make space. So interesting there. Are, are there any standouts on the practice squad you're excited about or anybody that you'd, you'd like to see come join the team? Well, you know, the, I guess the the obvious answer here is the fan favorite, Kadero Hodge. He was pretty impressive in the preseason. And I'm happy that he's on the practice squad, but I want to see him play because I liked what he did in the preseason, but I don't want to see him play because that means something's going on with our depth chart with the wide receiver core. And I love our wide receivers this year. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Jack that Hodge is still here, but it's a, it's a pretty tough team to make uh, looking at why our, looking at our wide receivers and thinking about some of the expectations that are set for us in this entire season as far as scoring is concerned and how we're going to be able to utilize all these wide receivers. So Daryl Hodge, yeah, happy he's still around. And then, you know, just the, the same person we talked about before, Hemingway. Um, you know, I want the best for him. I hope that he can potentially make a team. He's got a great size. He's a, he's a big guy. He's fast. He could probably be a pretty solid tight end for somebody, but he just he just didn't fit in here, and he was just doing too much pass blocking and not enough receiving and, and getting extra yards. So I wish the best for him. Uh, but yeah, those are two that kind of that kind of stick out to me. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, I would really like to see. We talked about carrying three quarterbacks. I'd really like to see us, you know, put Brandon Allen on the practice squad, probably dump Luis Perez, and then bring up Kadero Hodge. I'd rather have one more wide receiver that we mm, can throw yeah. in there and. And maybe just give a couple plays to throughout, you know, give five snaps throughout the game and see if he can, you know, break one down the field. He's got crazy speed or even kind of fill in that Tavon Austin role, that jet sweep, that, you know, that speedster around the corner that maybe we give it to, maybe we don't. We'll see how it shakes out. I don't think this thing is set when we come into the 53, but lots to come until that happens. James, we're going to take one more commercial break. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about some more Rams news. And I've got one more thing I want to invite you guys to come join. So stay with us. I'll tell you on the other side. Quick commercial break. We'll be right back. All right, Rams Nation, we are back for our final segment of our Tuesday edition of Locked On Rams. You already know James Kroger is joining us. We've had some good conversations so far about the 53, the practice squad, Galil Mack gone. Before we get to the next little topic, what I want to do is invite everybody that's listening, come join our Pick'em League. I'm going to post it in our Facebook page, in our Facebook group, on Twitter, on Instagram. 
I'm gonna call your mom, I'm gonna tell her, I'm gonna invite you every way, come on in. It is a 17 week pick and pull. It's not a confidence thing, it's just pick the team you think's gonna win. Go ahead and select the Rams for 17 weeks for all I care. You'll be joining me on that. We're going to give away some prizes at the end. And, and maybe halfway through the season, if I'm feeling cheeky, we'll give out a shirt or a hat or something like that for someone that's standing out. But we're definitely giving away some prizes at the end. That's going to kind of develop along the way. We had some really close races last year, all the way up to the last game of the season. James, your dad was involved near the end. We had about, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 60, 70 people. This was joined. This is really a Rams podcast thing, but we're connecting the two listenerships. So if you're listening, to both of us you're gonna hear this twice and you better join or else i'm pretty pretty offended it's pretty easy guys uh <laughs> it sends you little reminders it's on the nfl i'll put the link up i'll share it come join us it's gonna be a bunch of fun and hey if you're good at it you're gonna win some stuff all right so that's gonna be a bunch of fun i can't wait for that right barry and you talked about picking the rams almost every single week and it sounds like a lot of people are feeling that way and you also mentioned your confidence pool that you did well Talk about confidence with the Rams in the 180 that they did last year. I just saw an article where Peter King came out and predicted that the LA Rams are going to be facing the Patriots in Super Bowl 53. So Peter King uh, works for NBC Sports, for those of you that don't know, and he reached out and toured 22 of the league's 32 camps over the last five weeks. And he always has a lot of predictions going out through uh, the year and, and somebody that we follow on social media. But one thing specifically that he quoted that stuck out to me and made me really happy about the season, he said, here we are three days before the start of NFL's 99th season, and there's no team in recent history that has done a 180 like the Rams of the past year. I'm about to do something that is either insane or an illustration of how quickly life changes in a league that turns so fast and so furious. Or maybe it's a sign that building a good football team really takes only four or five cutting edge decisions. I love that. Yeah. But after seeing 22 teams in five weeks on my camp trip, it was hard to come away from Rams camp thinking they shouldn't be a Super Bowl favorite. It wow. brings chills down my back reading that, <laughs> dude, too. honestly. And that's like the fourth time I read that. There's more to the <laughs> quote. Check out. Maybe I'll toss up the article on Twitter. But we're talking about a Goff, Brady, Super Bowl, seeking out a dynasty and the Patriots and being that new, young team in the NFL. I mean, we're in a new era, dude. And uh, I was just really happy to, to see that and looking at some of your predictions, talking about the NFL pick em and your confidence pool. And I haven't even done my fantasy fantasy draft i'm doing it the day before the first game i'm doing it uh, on wednesday so on my one-year wedding anniversary by the way that's hey. how committed i am but uh fair <laughs> aren't you jacked about about Dude. the Peter king prediction yeah that's amazing it's one of those things though you hear uh as we talked with you know doing a lot of crossovers here on locked on podcast network and talking to other teams and a lot of teams and guys are saying well you guys won the off season and that's never a good thing in, in years past but the one thing is you never had Sean McVay in years past, right? You didn't have mm -hmm. the chemistry, and we did win the offseason, but we won on the defense. Our offense is what really was amazing last year, 29 points per game, led the league. We all know that, right? We only added one person, and that's Brandon Cooks. It's not like we shook up the whole line. We brought in you know, a new running back and you know, a new scheme, and it's the same scheme. We just kicked out Sammy Watkins and plugged in Brandon Cooks. Our defense just became stacked. And everyone's like, oh, chemistry, chemistry. Wade Phillips is like the coolest defensive coordinator, if, whoever you ask. I mean, we saw when J.J. Watt was in town, he was over there hugging Wade Phillips and called him one of the best coaches he's ever had in his life. So uh, that says a lot about that coaching staff and what they can do with these players. So I think they're going to gel. I think everyone you know, that's predicting the Rams to go far, it makes me a little nervous when Peter King puts out this article. But at the same time, I get where he's coming from. Me and you are at camp, and there's something that's going on over there. And you can feel that they mm -hmm. feel it too. It's not just us and the hype train running away with it in the media. It's McVay and, and those 53 guys understand what they did last year so fast and now having a full off season, year two in McVay, all these guys getting better, Jared Goff getting better and better every day. I'm excited for him to go and shut up a lot of doubters because even talking to some friends out here in Chicago and, and no one really r believes in Jared Goff, oh, he's a system quarterback and, oh, he's going to get exposed this year and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, man, <laughs> just wait and see. Wait till he puts up, you know, 32 points per game. And, you know, we do end up with an MVP candidate or maybe two. So I'm excited. Mm. I love hearing that quote. A guy that went and toured 22 teams and came away and said, I cannot walk away and not have the Rams in the Super Bowl game is a cool feeling from a guy that knows the NFL pretty well. So awesome article, James. I'm glad you shared it. 
Uh, I'm glad you came on and talked with us. Again, it's really early over there. It's it's midday here in Chicago, so we jumped on. You were actually about to go do some baby shopping, so now I'm going to give you some chance to go and do that. Congratulations. You guys <laughs> didn't know. James is going to be a father, guys. He's on his way. Hey, uh, I, got a, I got the new quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams in about 20 years on the way, awesome. everybody. Awesome. Hopefully he's better than you. Uh, you know, <laughs> Let's get him in some QB camps, huh? Uh, No, I'm just playing, bud. If you guys don't know, me and James played high school football together. And when I say played high school football together, like I was on the sidelines, he was on the sidelines, and football was going on in front of us. Kidding, but mostly kind of true. We had a good time. So this relationship goes way back. That's why we have a blast talking LA Rams football. James, thanks for joining us. I can't wait to break this game down a little bit further. We're going to be doing a Rams podcast uh, tomorrow that will probably release like Wednesday, Thursday-ish. Uh, So, guys, make sure to jump on over there and check out that long form. We're really going to break down the game, what to expect week one, how some of those matchups are going to go. Obviously, the 53-man roster and more and stuff on that. So, uh, appreciate you coming on, James. All right, Rams fans, and don't forget, we've got my boy Q on tomorrow from Locked On Raiders. He's going to be joining us to break down the Monday night football game. Of course, i got to give him a little bit of crap for that Khalil Mack trade, see how he's doing. We're a couple days removed. Hopefully, he's recovered a little bit. But we're going to talk about how that affects this game and what he can really expect for that matchup on Monday night football. I'm going to let you get out of here. We'll see you. But Rams Nation, you know what it is. Until next time. Peace. Peace.